Hello everyone and welcome back. It's time for a patch rundown. It has been a while. I recorded the last one before I left for Worlds and now I'm back. So let's talk about some patch notes. Uh, I will not be covering 12.20. Uh, it's far too far in the past, so don't worry about it. But 12.21 is here and uh, preseason is coming pretty soon. Of course, we're still in the middle of Worlds, so obviously it's not going to affect the World Championship, but still a pretty fun patch. So let's talk about what we got going on here. Uh, biggest thing is Cassante is coming out. Cassante, I am very excited about. This champion is super, super cool. Um, gonna be playing him a bunch on release, so uh, that should be fun. Maybe I'll stream, I'm not sure, but either way, cool champion set is coming out. Looks pretty sweet. I've been um, playing as much league as possible to get the tokens to get his prestige skin. I am most of the way there, so hopefully we get that skin rocking before too long. Now, onto the balance changes. Ari is coming out uh, with some buffs. She's not doing terribly well. Um, all of the win rate data I'm going to say during this patch rundown is from lolalytics.com. It is the last 30 days of ranked solo queue across all ranks. So some of these champions are going to be nerfed only for really high, really low MMR. Um, this is going to be across all ranked games, which is going to be, I mean, it's going to cluster. It's going to heavily be impacted by silver and gold level games. That is where the vast majority of players are. Um, but, you know, that is just the arbitrary ranks where most players sit. I mean, Riot just arbitrarily chose medals for where players sit, and so that is what it is. Anyway, Ari, across 1.2 million games, has a 48.55% win rate across the last month. Um, she might have been nerfed in the middle of part of that if her nerf was under two patches ago, or exactly two patches ago, then there's like two days of, of pre-nerf data in there, but either way, it definitely isn't winning on average for people, and is getting a mana cost buff of just five, and an AP ratio buff of 5% both on Q. So, sorry for the flashbang, but here you go. Mana cost is down by a little bit. Not a huge deal, but certainly can matter a bit there. You can obviously get a few more spells off if you spam to get stuff done. So, pretty minor buff there. And then this is an approximation of how much damage Q will deal off of a fairly generic amount of ability power getting bought. Um, scaling to around, I want to say, like 270 ability power on about three items around getting level 18. Uh, which I think is relatively accurate uh, as a three to four item build and about what she's going to be looking at here. So, um, you know tends toward a 6% or more damage buff. Obviously, the farther along you get in the game, if you get to four items, you get a death cap, uh, the numbers get higher for you because uh, it's an AP ratio buff. But overall, pretty small buffs uh, to the tune of around 1%, which is what they want. Um, and Ari, for the average player in League of Legends, will be a relatively balanced champion. Next up is Belveth, who is certainly doing too well in um, many situations um, across average MMR, um, across all ranked games, 1.5 million games, 52.5% win rate, definitely on the strong side. Not absurd, at least not for the average player, but I think she's doing very, very well in ultra high MMR. Um, anyway, a pretty simple set of changes, a two second cooldown on Royal Maelstrom and Endless Banquet, which is the Void Remora, which I believe you have to have killed, um, Dragon or Baron or Rift Herald to get, um... Otherwise, you just get the ult form, and I don't believe a kill gives you the Void Remora. I could be wrong. I don't play that of Belveth. Um, that's going to be, obviously, if in effect at some points in time. Minions have less health, but the big one is the two-second cooldown on E. Uh, this can certainly affect her jungle clear. It is certainly possible that she can get two off in a team fight. It's worth noting that um, Belveth is still very, very slightly um, benefited by... Um, maxing E first. It is not substantially higher win rate, but it is higher win rate to max E first. That said, a flat two-second cooldown increase means you're going to cast fewer E's. Um, not only does that mean the cooldown incentive is less valuable, since cutting six seconds off of 24 is less meaningful than six seconds off of 22. The lower the cooldown, the more you want to cut six seconds off. Uh, but also means that <clears throat> getting higher base damage, which ranking it up gives you, is going to matter less because you can cast the ability less because of the flat cooldown increase. So, um, decent chance that Emax will no longer be correct, or at least will be situational instead of usually correct. It will probably be usually incorrect. Um, though there'll probably still be terms for it. Either way, pretty minor nerf here on the cooldown change. Um, it won't be very big, but here is Belveth, uh, the data table. Um, if you're going to max it second, which is the more common build, um, it's just a two-second change. You can see it's 9 to 13% longer cooldown. If you max it first, you get that 13% cooldown nerf much earlier on, which is why, again, a nerf like this makes you max E first uh, less often. Uh, I think it's going to be a pretty small nerf, and ultimately I think Belveth is going to end up still on the strong side. I think R is going to end up relatively balanced, but I think Belveth will end up slightly on the strong side still. 
Next up is Blitzcrank, um, who, of course, they tried to get him into the jungle. He is vaguely playable in the jungle, though generally not very strong there. Um, we'll see with the preseason update, with big jungle changes, what that does to Blitzcrank. We'll have to see, though, as that goes on. But Blitzcrank is doing too well for the vast majority of players in solo queue um, across two point almost 2 million games of solo queue at all ranks. He has a 52.7% win rate, certainly doing a bit too well in ranked solo queue for most people, and good to see nerfs come in. I think it's been multiple patches in a row. Um, to be fair, uh, I again, I am measuring the last 30 days on average. Let me change my data set to just the most recent patch. Um, and it's 52.36% across 1 million games over just 12.20. Certainly still doing too well. Definitely still driving a nerf. So 20 um, base health and uh, 4 base MR. I do like base MR being a nerf here because this means, uh, though not every bot lane matchup has a bunch of magic damage into it, um, this does nerf his jungle less. Obviously, the big attack speed increase on Overdrive has been pretty valuable. Certainly, jungle let's max is this first, which means he's going to feel the 10% attack speed cut a little bit less than Support Blitz, who leaves it for max second. So it's rank 1 until level 8. You're going to feel the 10% a bit more in that case. Uh, but either way... Durability nerfs as well as DPS nerfs. So we can look at this. Uh, here's the base health before and after. It is again down by 20, which is you know three to one percent less health. Not a very big deal, but the four MR uh, compounds with this. So multiplied together, it is um, six to three percent less magic damage durability. Now it is worth noting that in any realistic situation, Blitzcrank going from full to dead will also be going through his passive shield. That is not in the math here, to be fair. So his actual durability um, on baseline health is actually nerfed by less than this indicates, but I can never assume how much the mana shield gets used. It is possible to get popped without it getting consumed, for example. Um, you just, you know, you poke him off, a, a Zyra plant hits him, he disengages, it's on cooldown, next all that happens, he gets no shield, right? That's possible. Um, regardless, again, <clears throat> not included in this data. Uh, still though, certainly can be, can be meaningful. Um, as a jungler, he's gonna come into his ganks with 20 less health. Um, Will that matter? At some point it can, of course. Uh, there's going to be, you know, some some moderate nerfs here for sure. Um, less durable. You can kill him more easily as Zyra or whatever. Okay, great. Next thing is, of course, the W attack speed nerf. So we're going to scroll to get Corky off the screen. Um, so this is um, maxing at second. This is the support strength build. Um, just getting 10% less attack speed. Point, um, point zero 0.07 fewer attacks per second is overall 8% less attack speed. Uh, finally get rank 2 over here. And then as you level up, as you get ranks in the ability, it goes from being eight, you know, 7, 8% less attack speed to around 5% less attack speed um, in, in, in total practice. Counting his base stats, counting everything, leveling up, all that stuff. He doesn't buy any attack speed anywhere else, so going to be pretty much this unless you're building attack speed as part of your build. Now, if you are maxing it first, aka you're a jungle blitz crank, maybe you're getting an Ash Tooth pretty early on, um, it's still the same points until level 3 when you get rank 2 of the ability, and you max it, and then by level 9, it is only 5% less attack speed. Uh, does that still matter? Yes, it does. Um, you're going to get fewer um, ultimate uh, passive procs, you're going to clear the jungle more slowly uh, from rank 2 of W onwards. Like It is going to matter. It is going to do stuff. This is going to slow down his jungle. There's no way about it. Jungle Blitzcrank is definitively getting nerfed. Um, I believe support Blitzcrank is a maybe getting nerfed by more, but ultimately Jungle Blitz being viable is not as important as support Blitz not being overpowered. So we go here. I think there could be more changes to make Jungle Blitz better, but limited time, limited resources, and it's not the most important thing to, to prioritize, so whatever. Definitely nerf though, good to see. I think Blitz will still be relatively strong, but I think drops off the ban list. This is a pretty substantial durability cut that should drop him off the ban list. Next up is Corky getting some buffs. Um, he's generally not doing too well in solo queue. Uh, across all ranks, 30 days, 200,000 games, 47% win rate. Uh, certainly not doing amazingly. He's doing okay, but not doing outstanding. So, uh, I mean, 47 is like, I would say it's playable, but clearly not strong, right? So, okay, some buffs. Um, four health growth. Uh, 0.3 attack damage growth. Um, in general, I think scaling stats tends to affect low MMR more than high MMR. If we look at, for example, Diamond Plus for Corky, um, honestly, does not seem to indicate that Corky is scaling very strongly with MMR. Um, now, maybe that's limited data because Corky is not the popular champion, but doesn't appear at, at very basic baseline inspection to scale up with MMR. Um, this actually, there's a chance Corky gets low MMR skewed with a change like this. I'm not sure. Obviously, we know that Corky was a big pro problem uh, for a while with, um, you know, barely being a stronger champion. Um, and his solo queue wasn't very really good either. So, I don't know. 
Um, regardless, we'll see if we can cork into a spot where he's less of a pro problem. Um, it is worth noting that the pro problem is purely playing the AP poke version of the champion, and with AP ratio nerfs going in, they can then buff back the other parts of the champion, and AD corking can kind of come back. I mean, I always have a soft spot for Triforce AD corky. Um, looking at build data, um, it, honestly, AP builds are seemingly very inferior. Shield Bow has a 2% win rate bump over Manamune. Um, it's actually 6% over um, Luden's Echo first item. Uh, second item, Luden's, appears to be um, behind Shield Bow. It's behind Ravenous Hydra. It's behind Essence Reaver. It's behind Trinity Force. So it appears as, as though for um, average players, for solo queue players, AD Corky is already better. Um, and... I think that's fine. Like, I don't think AP Corky needs to be good. I think it's... I think AP Corky is a pretty flat champion. I don't think it's actually a very healthy kit. It's a champ with innate escapes with really, really long-range AoE poke um, that doesn't really have a very meaningful cooldown or mana cost. I think AP Corky is a fairly problematic build. I am glad Riot nerfed it out, but I would like them to buff AD Corky back. I think AD Corky is actually a pretty cool champion. So, cool to see these buffs. I think they're pretty solid. Um... We'll see where it goes, um, but again, he needs about 3% win rate um, to become balanced for the average player. And this will not be a 3% win rate buff. I would guess it's to the tune of around 1%, to be honest. Um, so, I mean, they could have swung much harder with Corky, um, and I think that would have been fine. I think they could have gone, you know, 110 health, uh, you know, like 3.5 AD per level, I think is a defensible change list. Um, now, I know one thing that Riot designers try to do is submit change lists that are also exciting for players. Like, clearly, Corky isn't very popular, but 200,000 games over the last month is not none. Um, and you know it's not meta sheep, right? Like, people who are playing Corky are playing them because they want to play Corky, not because, like, their favorite pro is currently playing Corky, right? Um, in in general, right? So it's like, well, if you can make Corky more exciting, and when you see Bachelor, it's like, oh, that's a really cool change. I might want to try Corky now. Like, for health growth, to be fair, is not that. Um, it does help him, like, dive bomb in a little bit, um, right? Shorter range builds, right? Non-poke builds, some durability, sheen synergy with base AD. Like, it is moving towards the, not bruisery, he's not going to be rumble. Um, but, like, you know, he does want to be in combat, like, the E lasts four seconds. You need to be able to, like, face your opponents for that whole time for that to work. Um, right? Dive bombing him with the W or package, like, those are, those are relevant things. So, like, this does still push toward what is ideal Corky. I think obviously there can be a lot of work done to make Corky more exciting champions. He's not very popular, but um, anyway, this is, I would say, about 1, 1.5% win rate, and he will still be weak for the average player. Next up, Malzahar. Malzahar gets a little nice small quality of life thing where his minions will automatically, well, sorry, his E will automatically execute minions who are low on health. This will functionally save about one tick. Um, I didn't bother doing an actual data table of like, how much damage is one tick of Malzahar E at each champion level? Because it doesn't really matter. Um, but again, it's going to be, it's gonna be about, about one tick forward. So this will last hit against your own minions a bit more easily. And Malzahar will just have higher CS, right? Malzahar is getting more gold. It'll be a win rate bump. We'll see how big it ends up actually being. There's a chance this could be like a 1% win rate bump. Because um, he's going to get like 30 more CS in a game. And 500 gold is worth 1% win rate. You know, like that could be the case. I, I don't really know. Um, but certainly... Data tracking exists. If Riot wants, they could figure out, like, how many more minions a game does Malzahar kill um, and figure that out. It's certainly a possibility. Either way, um, he's already doing pretty well, by the way. 51 recorded percent win rate um, in solo queue for average players. Um, doesn't need a buff, but the quality of life is still pretty cool. Next up is Misfortune, getting some um, a couple of sets of changes. So this is Misfortune, um, mostly getting nerfed in AD and buffed in support. Um, Misfortune as an AD carry across the last month, which to be fair, does overlap with some Misfortune nerfs. So we're going to go ahead and look at the most recent patch instead. Um, Misfortune across 12.20 had a 50.75% win rate for the average player across solo queue across 2.2 million games. Just this patch. Very, very popular champion. Um, fairly high ban rate. Certainly incredibly, incredibly powerful. Doing very well. And so AD Misfortune, who doesn't build ability power, simply has a worse slow. Right? The slow is down 50% to 40%. It is, it is inferior. It is worse. Um, nothing to the change of the ultimate, nothing to change of the magic damage of the E, but 18% lower slow is going to matter a little bit. It's probably under 1% win rate, to be fair. This is probably still going to be one of the highest, if not the highest win rate bot lane marksman. Um, there are other good bot laners out there. I think there's still a lot of really good mages. Uh, Swain and Karthus are among them. Um, but either way, um, a small nerf. I think, honestly, they could have done more, to be fair. Um, oh, well. 
Um, still a pretty strong champion and will be for AD Misfortune. That said, Support Misfortune, which had 137,000 games this patch, has a 45% win rate and, unsurprisingly, tends to build ability power. Um, interestingly, Spell Thieves versus Spectral Sickle are relatively close to win rate. Spectral Sickle is potentially stronger. Doesn't really matter, um, but... Of note, either way, um, AP MF is certainly the most common version of Sport MF, and again has a 45% win rate. So AP ratio buffs certainly help out a champion that is, um, to be fair, I think Support Misfortune is um, about twice as popular as Mid Corky. So, um, you know, actually serving a relatively large player base um, with these buffs, and and I think fine to do that because, hey, I'm, I'm happy to have viable options. Um, you know, playing different things is what keeps... Uh, league fresh for me. Uh, for example, I'm playing much of Kane right now and hadn't really ever gotten into Kane, so I'm I'm putting games into him and enjoying learning a champion and and doing some things well, some things poorly. But it is always fun to learn new things and and again adding AP misfortune as a support I think is generally a positive thing for the game. So uh, magic damage uh, AP ratio buff on the E actually pretty aggressive. This is a very very aggressive AP ratio. Um, the Salona has an AP ratio and the bullet time or sorry has a has a lower base but a higher higher AP ratio and bullet time has a higher AP ratio as well. Sorry. For the flashbang. Um, oh yeah, here's Corky's base stats of base health and base AD. Again, not a huge deal, but there's the numbers. My bad for not showing that one last time. Misfortune, um, through most conventional builds, will probably never actually buff the slow on her E. Uh, the amount of ability power required to make the stronger is is substantial. Um, I think it's around 400, if my math is correct, and it's going to take a while to get to that number. It's going to be like a four item, including a death cap build. Good luck getting there. It's basically full build for AP Misfortune, so she's not really going to have um, a stronger slow than before. Now, worth noting, um, I didn't include the E damage. That's my mistake, uh, but we can do the R damage here, which is actually up a decent amount and more than I would have expected. Um, keep in mind that R's base damage is based off of her total AD, which factors in her base AD, so champion leveling up, um, and you get more waves on rank, which buffs the AP ratio and functionally the AD ratio, which is functionally also the base damage. Um, though as the number of waves go up, um, the ratio of AP ratio to AD ratio doesn't change, it's still 0.25 and 0.75, um, so it's just simply as she builds more ability power, the damage of the ult goes up and up and up compared to the patch, and a pretty solid 7 to 11% more damage across the game, which is actually pretty reasonable overall. Um, yeah, I could do this math, it's not a big deal. Ultimately, what matters is AP Misfortune will still not be as good as other mage supports, Brand and Zyra and... Velkaz and Zareth are all going to be stronger than APMF. But if you want to play some APMF, obviously it's your prerogative, do what you want, but I think she is still not there, especially because, again, this is a nerf even to AP Misfortune, and this is a buff, and this is a buff. But I think overall, still going to be um, fairly weak on average. Orn uh, has a simple tooltip fix um, that I think... So I saw some complaints in the Reddit thread about, like, why would you buff or, like, not bug fix a champion that, um, like, I guess could be nerfed. But the way I view it is it it generally doesn't matter. There are exceptions here. It generally doesn't matter what, like, the design intent of the slow scaling with rank is. Because ultimately, Ornn exists with a 60% slow at all ranks on his ultimate. If you want to nerf Ornn... You can nerf Orn, but should then, like, think about what is the best way to nerf Orn. Just because you realize the tooltip isn't accurate doesn't mean that you have to go and be beholden to the tooltip. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. Um, Orn clearly functions as a champion um, in current League of Legends. He's, like, relatively popular at Worlds right now. He's, like, the number five pick band top laner, which is, like... A pretty good balance state. Orn's pretty playable. He's maybe the most played tank in a pretty fighter-heavy metagame, but, like, he provides variety. His win rate in solo queue is fine. His pick rate in solo queue and banner rate in solo queue are fine. He's chilling. I don't think Orn really needs to be nerfed. Is he a little bit strong? I mean, probably. He's pro-viable, and his win rate's about 50%, but, like, we're chilling. Um... So I think the, the complaint of like, well, why not just fix the ability, I think is coming at it the wrong way because the game is what matters, not a tooltip that someone wrote two years ago. Um, so you come in and say, hey, Orn's functioning. Hey, I discovered this tooltip's out of date. I'm going to fix the tooltip. Cool, yeah. Like, 
that's an easy sell at all points in time. Um, and then if you think there should be design work done on Ornn, you could then do design work on Ornn. Uh, but yeah, be, being beholden to a tooltip, not a very big deal. So functionally, no gameplay changes to Ornn. The tooltip is updated. And that was a very, very long rundown of the tooltip changed. But there you go. So Zhao is getting updates. Um, he is getting a lower base cooldown on E, which will be a strict upgrade, of course. Um, he's also getting a higher AD ratio from level 6 onward on his passive, and then he's getting an AP ratio buff on the, the heal for the termination. Now, worth noting, as I look through solo queue win rate data for Sin Zhao, um, indicates that potentially Stridebreaker first is a very, very good item in this champion, and should really, really be considered. Um, also of note, a um, couple of Sin Zhao things, right? So, um, on average, this will be a Sin Zhao thing, I promise. On average, people tend to under buy Mercury Treads compared to Steel Caps. Um, that, in my opinion, if you can convince yourself that Merc Treads make sense in this game, you should probably buy it over Steel Caps more often than not. Um, so, for example, for Sinjao, Steel Caps has double the pick rate that Merc Treads does, but the win rate of Merc Treads is over 2.5% higher. Which means when people eventually go Merc Treads, it's substantially better than it is Steel Caps. Now, there's a lot of biases here in this data. Um, four AP teams are probably pretty bad teams. Um, and so any games Merc Treads is clearly the best option is like, well, of course, it, the, the team he's against is very, very poor. But like, a win rate difference this large leads me to believe that people are buying Steel Caps when they should be buying Merc Treads. And that, you know... They're, they're getting a 47% Steel Cap buy, and they could be getting a 49% Merc Treads buy. Like, Merc Treads win rate could go down because people are moving over and like, ooh, in really rough team comps where I'm behind and I'm getting killed by, like, Viego combos, I actually should have gotten Merc Treads because I'm dying to Viego, as it turns out, because, like, the Rise route is letting Viego get in. And the reason I'm going to circle back to it being a Sin Zhao point, though, is that Sin Zhao has an ultimate that removes damage and only damage from outside the ring. Meaning, when I ult, Varus ult still roots me, but Varus autos don't damage me. So when I ult, Merc Treads affects my champion and Steel Caps don't. Um, and that's why it's a really big Sin Zhao thing, is like, when you're playing the champion, in every team fight, there's only ever one champion damaging you anyway, but five who can crowd control you. Which means crowd control is a bigger deal than damage to Sinjap. Thus, he should probably be building Merc Treads way more than he builds Steel Caps. This, of course, can change per champion. There's a lot that goes into the discussion overall, but it's worth noting, I think pretty strongly, that a lot of melee champions over by steel caps when they should try to get merc treads um that's the little quick spiel want to get that out of the way um ap sinjao does not really seem to be a thing first item winner i can't see, see really a single ap item uh second item sinjao i can't see a single ap item ap sinjao really is not a thing um no one's playing it either way sinjao in solo queue over the last month um for average players over 400,000 games has a 47 and three quarters percent win rate sinjao could deal with or could do with a two percent win rate buff um now, a bit of AD ratio on the passive, um, and it wasn't good on E, is probably not 2% win rate. It's probably around 1%. I think they could have maybe swung harder for Sin Zhao. Of course, the problem is Sin Zhao is a pro play problem. Sin Zhao has been a big deal in pro play before, um, and this is a very quick, like, hey, his win rate has bottomed out. Let's give him a quick buff. Priest is going to change everything anyway. Um, this version of Sin Zhao will never see pro play because guess what? the jungle updates happening in preseason, so it doesn't really matter. Um, but, like, you know, it is good that for the next few weeks, Sinjao is less garbage and more players can enjoy him without feeling like griefing their team. So that's nice. Anyway, it is a relatively late game focus buff with the AD ratio being at, at later points of the ability or of the champion. So levels 1 through 5, there's no change. His early clears, early dueling doesn't go anywhere. But then here is how much damage 3 auto attacks deal. Um, assuming you buy 0 bonus AD. Now, everything... Everything included here is a total AD ratio, right? His base AD from leveling up, any items he buys. This percentage will literally never change unless you buy critical strike chance. 
Um, which, let's be clear, you're not going to. I guess with a Sheen, it would also drop a little bit. That one, you're more likely to. You could, you know, Divine Thunderer is a possibility for Sin Zhao, right? Um, either way, here is your data. It is 1.5, then 3, then 4.3% more damage. Auto, auto, third auto, um, does the, the overhead strike. Um, and that whole combo does 1.5 to 4% more damage from level 6 onwards. So a bit better late game. I think they could probably juice this up even harder. Um, I think there's actually a pretty cool spot for power on the champion. Um, I think him him being more of a fighter is a cool thing. Um, e, attack speed duration, for example, is already 5 seconds long, actually. But, like, you know, maybe with, with higher ranks and stuff as well. Um, because from what I can tell... Um, Pro play seems to prioritize fighter junglers primarily as how good is your early skirmishing slash how good is your early gank. And solo queue tends to much more care about how good is your mid to late game team fighting. That is my belief on jungle fighter kits and why you tend to see fighter itemization do really, really well in solo queue in AD jungler. So you're looking at like, Belveth going two or three AD items like Kraken, Ruin King, and Rageblade, which you will never see in pro play. Um, AD Jarvan was really good in solo queue when people were only playing Tank Jarvan in pro. Um, and champions like Sin Zhao and Kane. Um, you know, their their wide disparity between single or a solo queue viability and pro viability is probably about how much of a damage champion they actually are. You look at Viego builds and it's Divine Sunder or Tank primarily in pro play. You look at a solo queue builds and it's like, oh, that goes Kraken Slayer. And is rewarded for it in solo queue. So I think that's actually a large portion of it. And I think um, champion like Sin Zhao, they could push him even more into being a fighter than a team fighter, right? His ult duration, uh, less important, but his E attack speed and, and whatnot means more. AD ratios means more. That way, solo queue Sin Zhao could be more successful without making it an appropriate problem. Things like that. Um, that's my belief. Maybe that's not tr correct, but um, either way. Um, this is a small buff. This one second definitely matters. Keep in mind that Audacious Charge, right? You get the cooldown reset off using the Q. Q's cooldown is relatively short, so um, you're going to get three hits of the Q and then maybe a second run on this to get Audacious Charge back. Um, keep in mind that the E attack speed buff is five seconds long. So instead of five on, seven off, it's five on, six off. But really keep in mind the Q reset. So instead of, instead of five on... Uh, four off, it's five on, three off. That's actually pretty, pretty high uptime. Um, for Audacious Charge, obviously you could add a second here as well and, and get more out of it or, you know, add some rank up to it and get more, but whatever. Um, yeah, certainly this will do a fair bit for his, his ability to fight in a team fight. Game remake updates. Um, you can surrender, um, or sorry, slash remake, um, for more of the game. Um, it, it, instead of being available, um, at three minutes, if remake condition is hit, uh, remake is available from 1.30 until almost actually 3.30. Like if someone ends up getting, you know, Rage AFKs or whatever and is gone at 2.59, you can then surrender by 2.29. So um, pretty cool. You can remake much earlier on. It's going to have more aggressive remake understanding. You can remake an ARM's rotating game mode. So positive stuff. Cool to get out of bad games sooner. Big change. Cool stuff right there. Um, more event missions for the battle pass and then some bug fixing QL stuff that I'm not going to be looking at too aggressively. Um, some skins though. Looks pretty cool. Prestige, Imperium, Cassante, definitely something I'm looking forward to unlocking. And then cool skins, Pike, Jax, Jin, Lux, Vex, Zack, Zed, Chromas, a lot of stuff. All right, uh, real quick patch 12.21 TLDR. Not too much to go about here. There's not a ton in the patch. Seven champions changes. This is a tooltip fix. Um, Ari gets a decent amount of extra damage and a little bit lower mana cost. Um, overall, relatively weak in solo queue uh, will be... Yeah, roughly balanced, maybe on the slightly weak side, but not too bad. Um, Bella gets two seconds added to her E cooldown and a bit less health on Voidermora, which eats an epic monster. Um, she's overall pretty strong on average and will probably still be so, so probably still a strong jungler in the next patch. Uh, Bless rank loses 20 health, loses 4 MR, and loses 10% attack speed while W is active. He's certainly very, very good in solo queue, in support, and not very good in jungle. He will be meaningfully worse in the jungle, and probably not too OP in solo queue. I think it's actually a pretty well-sized nerf to get Blitzcrank to relatively balanced in solo queue for support. Corky gets 4 health growth and 0.3 AD growth. He's in a pretty bad spot for solo queue. Um, and this buff is not that large. I think he will still, on average, be weak. 
Um, though from what I could tell, AT Corky still seems to outperform AP Corky for most players. With this buff, it'll be a bit closer. Um, I urge you to try some Triforce builds. Um, with a, a base AD buff, this will affect Triforce directly. And so, decent thought. Um, if you want to try some Corky, decent time to do it. See how you do. Malzahar has some lasting assistance on the E. Shouldn't be a huge deal, but of course he will be stronger with a bit more gold. So, he's already a pretty good spot. He's already pretty strong. So, keep playing Malzahar. Good champion. Misfortune is getting nerfed. Um, AD Misfortune is too strong, and she's losing 10% on her E slow. She will still be too strong, but a bit less so, though I think she is still going to be a pretty important ban, um, and overall a bit too strong of an AD carry. As for AP Misfortune, uh, primarily played, I would say, as support for AP's uh, concern, um, 5 to 10 more damage on the R, um, decent amount of extra damage on the E. This will functionally uh, be almost never a buff for the E. It is 400 ability power, which is going to be 4 to 5 items for Misfortune's E to have more slow than before. So AP MF gets, gets 1 nerf and 2 buffs, and is still going to be, as far as I can tell, overall too weak. Um, I can double check um, Misfortune um, AP as the bot laner, and it doesn't appear to be very good. All right, moving forward. Orin is a tooltip fix. Moving on. Sin Zhao gets um, at level 6, 11, and 16, uh, 1 1.5, 3, and 4.5% more total auto attack damage. It's not a very big deal, um, but technically his auto attack DPS goes up by 0, 1 through 5, uh, but then 1.5, 3, 4.5% more damage as an auto attacker. Not a huge deal, but it exists. Um, a bigger heal on the AP ratio. As far as I can tell, AP Sin Zhao does not exist, so it doesn't matter. But I guess technically the AP ratio is higher. Um, and one second cooldown off Alzacia's charge can certainly be a little bit useful as well. He's definitely not in a very good spot for most people in solo queue. This will get a bit closer, but he's probably still going to be overall on the weak side. Um, and there's going to be the ability to um, surrender out a remake much earlier on in the game. It's available from 130 onwards, basically when epic or uh, when jungle monsters spawn which should be a positive thing overall. And that's the patch. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye-bye.